What's up, sixpackabs.com? It's Thomas DeLauer, your lead nutritionist, and today I'm kind of raining on your parade a little bit. I'm gonna tell you all about peanut butter, and I'm gonna tell you that the peanut butter you've probably been eating is actually not too good for you. And I'm not just talking about from an arterial side of things, like with your arteries and with your veins and everything like that. I'm talking about just in general, that it could be slowing down your progress. So the first one that I wanna talk about is just the general regular peanut butters. When we have peanut butters, I really like to break them down into three different classifications. We've got the basic peanut butters, the skips, the jiffies, the main big stream, mainstream ones. Okay, then we've got the natural peanut butters, okay, the ones that call themselves natural, but if you look at the ingredients, they've got some things that I'm gonna point out. Okay, then we've got what I call the real peanut butters, the peanut butters that, quite honestly, are just peanuts and salt, okay, that's it. But let me break down the reasoning and let me break down what you should be leaning towards. And I also wanna give you some alternatives. Okay, so when we look at uh, regular peanut butters, basically they are containing something known as hydrogenated oils. Now to add insult to injury, I'm gonna explain the hydrogenation process, but these are usually hydrogenated soybean oils. Okay, and we're not talking about good quality soy. We're talking about low quality soy that is an extremely, extremely phytoestrogenic property that's going to cause you to have lower testosterone levels and higher estrogen levels, which is going to make it so it's much, much more difficult to burn fat. It's going to make it very, very difficult for you. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is the hydrogenation process in and of itself. So hydrogenation looks something like this. You have a fat molecule. Normally, you have a few hydrogen atoms that are in a fat molecule. To make a fat saturated, it has to have a bunch of hydrogen molecules. Every single seat at the table, every single hydrogen bond needs to be totally occupied with hydrogen. So basically, it becomes saturated. Well, what ends up happening with the hydrogenation process is you end up having this artificial hydrogen that's added into the mix, or it's a real hydrogen that's just artificially added. So I want you to think of it like this. You have a dinner table, and this dinner table has multiple seats at it, okay? and you have every single seat occupied with a hydrogen. That means there's no room for anything else to get in. It's just a saturated fat, okay? But if a fat doesn't naturally have those hydrogen seats occupied, we're basically manufacturing it and adding them in. That is, my friends, a definition of a trans fat. And a trans fat is metabolized very poorly in the body. So you might be thinking, well, I'm young. I don't really care about trans fats because I don't care about my arteries right now. Well, let me tell you something. It has more of an impact than just that. A regular fat takes about 18 days to completely start breaking down in terms of like a, what's called a cis fat, CIS. Basically, if it's a regular uh, diglyceride or even a monoglyceride, it's gonna break down in that period of time. But a trans fat is actually significantly slower to break down in the body. It takes 51 days for just half of that fat to break down in your body. You see, trans fats end up stopping enzymatic functions that allow us to break down fats. We'll do the math. That's not exactly good for fat loss, right? It's not just about the fact that it clogs up your arteries. It's actually slowing things down. So we've got the estrogenic properties, plus we've got the trans fat hydrogenation properties. Just a no-go, okay? Regular peanut butter, doesn't matter how much of a budget you're on. Spend a couple extra bucks and get the good stuff. Okay, then we have the natural peanut butters. Here's the thing with the natural peanut butters. They're better, okay? They don't contain the normal hydrogenated things, but they still have a bunch of sugar, and they still have palm oil. Palm oil by itself is not that bad, but what ends up happening with palm oil is something pretty interesting when it's refined. When it's refined, it actually becomes a carcinogen, which means it's causing cancer. Not a good thing. We don't necessarily want that, right? Okay, that's problem number one, and you may not be worried too much about that one right now, so let's talk about problem number two with the natural peanut butters, okay? When you combine this palm oil with the refinement process or anything like that, you create something known as a glycidyl fatty acid ester. These glycidyl fatty acid esters are what is called a genotoxin. A genotoxin is something that harms your, basically your genetic code, basically being able to write and scribe DNA and RNA. That may not sound like much, but our DNA and our RNA dictates how much muscle we build or how much fat we burn. So if you have something that is a toxin to that area of the body, that can really mess things up and really screw you over. Okay, but that's not the only problem with those natural ones. They still have monoglycerides and they still have diglycerides. Now, a monoglyceride is a fatty acid molecule that is bound to a glycerin. A diglyceride is two fatty acid molecules that are bound to a glycerin. Now, get this. You ever hear of a triglyceride? Yeah, we never want them elevated, do we? When we get our blood work done, our doctors say your triglycerides are high. Bad things. Well, guess what? Monoglyceride, diglyceride, only one step away from a triglyceride. And guess what? The FDA doesn't care 
if it has a mono or a diglyceride in it, they don't have to call it a trans fat, even though it's only one small step away from becoming a trans fat. Pretty scary stuff. So you definitely want to be avoiding those too, or at least make sure you're reading the label. So when it comes down to it, you're left with basically the organic peanut butters. You're left with ones that on the label say they've got peanuts in them and they've got salt in them. It doesn't matter what the other brands say. If it has more than that in it, you typically don't want it. That is it. You want the benefits from the legumes. You want the benefits from the oils. Okay, you're trying to get the right balance of fats, omega-3s and omega-6. Don't add the palm oil that's been refined. Don't add the soybean oil. Why? It's just slowing you down and triggering inflammation. So flat out, if you want to be able to recover from your workouts, and you want to be able to get in good shape, you need to just spend the extra dollar or two, get the organic stuff that just has the peanuts and just has the salt. And if you're looking for alternatives, almond butter is a great one. Just be cognizant of the almond butter and try to get one that's a smooth almond butter. Because the last thing that you want is to be ingesting chunks of almonds that are extremely hard to break down because of the phytic acid, which I've talked about in other videos. So as always, Six Pack Abs, thank you for keeping it locked in here on this channel. And be sure to subscribe, be sure to comment, and head on over to sixpackabs.com for lots more content. I'll see you in the next video.